Welcome to the Modern Manifestation Podcast. I'm your host, Bree Brown, a business mindset coach, entrepreneur, and a top competitor in a male-dominated industry. I'm a native Texan, the youngest of all brothers, and a lettuce-hating, wine-loving, curses-like-a-sailor recovering perfectionist. I've spent over a decade building my commission-based career, and my life's purpose is helping other women achieve the same multi-six-figure success I achieved before I was 25. I have a passion for helping women with mindset, money, and manifestation skills to help every young woman realize her full potential. If you're looking for vulnerable conversations, professional development, inspiration, or even a kick in the ass to get you motivated, you have come to the right place. Thanks for checking out the Modern Manifestation Podcast. Now let's jump right in to today's topic. Hello, friends. Today, we are getting technical, y'all. We are diving deep into the language of manifestation, the details that can be getting in the way for us if we are not being mindful. These details are affirmative language use, your subject's energy and phrases, and negations. And we're going to jump into them all today. These can either help us or hurt us depending on how we're using them. We already know that our words are powerful and they allow us to manifest what we want and need. But I get this question a lot. Can we unintentionally manifest what we do not want? Yes, 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 you can. Manifestation happens as a result of our identities and our lifestyles in addition to the intention setting, the visualization work, and every other thing that we're doing to work on ourselves. You manifest who and what you are. You get more of the things you believe about yourself. So if you have this identity as a negative person or as a pessimist whose immediate reaction is to just always focus on what's going wrong around you, then you're going to manifest more negativity and more that goes wrong for you. And for those of you that have caught some of my past episodes, you might remember that I was at one time a pessimist and very sarcastic just in general. And I'll never forget the time when I was in high school and I was in a really bad place emotionally. I was very much sitting in that pessimistic, sarcastic state of mind. And I'm still slightly sarcastic, let's be honest. But this was so much worse for me. (laughs) And one week I'd had a series of what felt like really dramatic losses at that point in my life. Just think about being a high schooler and all the things for you that felt quite dramatic at that point. And that week I started believing that everything would always go wrong for me. Immediately after I began having those negative thoughts, the universe just came crashing down on me as if to teach me a lesson. Because within about, I don't know, three or four days of getting to that emotional state, I'd wrecked my car, I tore my ACL so I couldn't dance my senior year, I lost my dance scholarship as a result, I was fired from my weekend job, I lost some close friends of mine, I was sent to detention for something I didn't do. I mean, the list went on. It just felt like a very rough week, and it felt overwhelming for where I was at that point. And I remember later that week having dinner with my dad to talk about how I would cover the car damage, what we were going to do, what job I could get in order to help out. And at this dinner, I was still very much in that, let's just call it a funk. And I just remember spilling my iced tea all over the table, all into my lap. And at the time, not a huge crier. It wasn't really something my family embraced. And I was still suppressing my emotions at that point. Mind you, hadn't done any of the mind work yet. And with all that being the case, I remember just staring at this tea as it ran off the table, just watching it spill into my lap. And instead of making some sort of effort to move out of the way or some sort of effort to contain it, I just sat there and thought to myself, this seems right. This is where I'm at. This is what I deserve. And then I just sat there and I just started tearing up and I didn't even try to clean up any of this. And the impact of this moment sticks into my brain, not because it was a traumatic event by any means. I mean, it was literally just spilled tea, but the weight of the thoughts I was carrying up to and at that moment were the thoughts I'd held for probably the next year or two. And I just remember that being the first moment that I was actually cognizant of them. And I'd probably had them for several weeks leading up to it, which is probably why I manifested so many things that had gone wrong. 
But those were the negative thoughts that I'd had, the phrasing I was using internally, and that is what I allowed to manifest for me for the next year or two. Specifically when it came to relationships and happiness and overall fulfillment in life. And during this time, I also fell into an abusive and very manipulative relationship. I also started college in a major that I really didn't like. I had another wreck that just completely totaled my car. And I just felt extremely, extremely lonely at university. And a part of that was because I was dating a guy who really didn't want me to make new friends because he was extremely jealous and possessive. And he was afraid that if I made friends, I was going to meet someone else and leave him. And gosh, I mean, like, if you want to talk about red flags, I need to dedicate a whole episode where we talk about that within relationships because I, everyone was telling me to leave that guy. I don't know why I didn't. I mean, actually, I know now why I didn't. But at the time, I was really struggling to figure out why I couldn't emotionally leave that relationship. So we're going to address that when I have the courage to create that podcast episode for you guys. But at the time, I was still just battling a lot of helplessness and misery, and I was perpetuating those same thoughts that I'd had for the past year or two, starting around, you know, high school, whenever I first mentioned the situation I was in. Thankfully, though, I started crawling my way out of this mindset probably, like I said, maybe a year or two into it, and I was able to correct my course. It wasn't easy, by the way, but I was just so sick and tired of feeling like shit. And I can't remember if I was aware of manifestation or the concept of manifestation just yet, but I do remember that I just really wanted to work on my mindset and my mindset shift because for whatever reason, that's just what I knew I needed to do. Maybe it was my intuition looking out for me. By working on my mindset, I was able to get to a place of contentment, if not happiness, and things were starting to get to that place where they were working for me, even based off of those really small shifts that I was making internally. And those shifts are the topics that we're going to get into today about language use. And the lesson I learned from that experience is that it's so much easier to maintain a positive mindset when you shift your focus, tune into the words you use, become more aware of what it is that you're saying and being intentional. To get your mind right, you have to get your words right, especially with yourself. Not just your spoken words either. These are the words that you think also. So with that, let's jump into the three areas you should focus on to help keep you on the right path or even to get to the right path if you just feel like you're not quite there yet. I guarantee if you're in a, if you're in a pretty low place, I have been there myself. These mindset shifts can really help you in your efforts to try to get to a place of contentment, if not happiness. So let's jump into it. The first of the three tips that I have for you is using affirmations, or what I like to call definitive language. This is your no bullshit way of saying something. No beating around the bush, no adding ifs, ands, buts, maybes. Definitive and affirmative word choices. I hear non-affirming statements probably most often when I first start talking with people who are beginning their journey to shift their mindset and manifestation abilities. Generally, we are taught to use less definitive language because it's more modest. Maybe we think it's more polite or humble, or somehow it just makes us feel a little less terrible about taking up space. Think about that again. Non-affirmative language makes us more polite, humble, modest, makes us feel a little less about taking up space. A lot of these qualities are what a lot of cultures try to teach women to do. And this language is not only meek and downplays our power, but it is unfortunately also the default setting for a lot of us. Coming from experience, this is especially true if you're from the southern United States. I already told y'all I'm from Texas. I am a Southern gal, and there are so many Southern hospitality and ladylike rules and ways of speaking that we have. And you may not be from the South, but you might be experiencing this within your own culture or within your own hometown or whatever it is. A lot of us are not taught or empowered to be direct or to state our wants and our needs. And it's fucking time to change that. It's time to ask for what we want and tell people what we need. I know I mentioned this in another podcast, and it's like the worst saying ever, but it's so helpful sometimes. But my dad has this phrase, and oh gosh, this is like, this is from the 90s, but anyway, his phrase was, I can't look at your ass and read your mind. 
And the way he meant that was he always used it when driving, when people didn't use their blinkers, like they just turned without any sort of indication. He'd always yell it at that moment. So it wasn't ever anything like sexual. So <laughs> I just want to preface that. But while that is a, a very crass phrase, it does have a fairly good meaning to to it, which means that you can't expect people to read your mind when you're not being clear about what it is that you want. And for whatever reason, women have been taught to do just that, to leave clues, but to not be direct. And maybe you've experienced this within your own relationship where you really want your spouse to do something for you. And so you just drop all of these hints and you try to say things that might lead them there, but you never actually tell them what it is that you want. That's a huge communication problem. You need to be able to be direct and ask for what it is that you want to need. And the universe needs that from you too. Non-affirming statements usually start with something like, I should, I would like, I want, I hope, I will try. These are not definitive phrases, and it does a great job of making sure that we can't be held accountable. Oh, I said I should try, not that I was going to. Or I said that I will try, not that I will accomplish. Or I said I hope, not that I will. If this is you, go back and listen to that perfectionism podcast episode number four, because you're giving, you're building yourself an out into your ask. How is that going to help you manifest what you want when you're trying to become what it is that you're trying to manifest first? That is like the least most convincing language ever. <laughs> Imagine trying to go in and asking for a promotion and be like, well, I was just hoping that you might really think that I'm worth this promotion. I've just, you know, I'll really try to be worthy of it. And I just feel like I should be in a place by now where that, you know, could possibly be something you would consider for me. That's what that language sounds like when you're not being affirmative versus going in and saying, I am valuable. I have done X, Y, Z. I am worth this. How do those two things feel to you? I hope that's a pretty stark comparison for you. These phrases are a weak ask <laughs> with no substance. Sorry, I'm laughing because I was looking at my notes and it instead of weak ask, it looked like weak ass phrases. But you know what? Fuck it. I like that better. Let's keep that. These weak ass phrases <laughs> have no substance. So instead of the I hopes and the I shoulds, use language that does not leave room for ambiguity, possibility, or redirection. Own that shit. Manifestation is based on your identity. You have to become the thing you want before you can do so or before you can manifest it. So an I should or an I hope or an I want or any of those other examples, those phrases will not convince the universe that you are already abundant. These phrases tell the universe that you desire, that you're without, that you do not yet have. You have to become before you can manifest. That's not becoming language. To give you a better example, let's compare two sentences. The first one is, I would like to be successful versus I am successful. Do those feel different to you? Seriously, let's listen to that again. The first one is, I would like to be successful versus I am successful. And say these to yourself. Do they feel differently to you? Because I don't know about you, but I feel a physical difference in these two statements. When I did this exercise on my own, stating I would like to be successful caused me to hunch down, think about all the reasons I was less than or all the reasons I weren't was not successful. And it made me just want to look down at my feet, shuffle along and shrug. It was full of what I lacked, what I desired, but did not have. But when I switched the statement to I am successful, my head rose, I stood a little taller, I felt the energy of ambition, and success just felt to, like it flooded through me. I embodied the abundance. I became successful, and therefore, I am the identity of success, and I attract more of that success to me. That is the energetic difference between these statements. That is the language of the universe. So instead of those weak-ass phrases, start each sentence with, I am, I do, I have. Affirm your manifestation from the get-go. Be direct and do not meekly ask for it. Fucking become it, take it, and act as if. 
The words you use are a direct contribution to what you're manifesting. The universe isn't fluent in any language but energy. So when you think about your word choices, be mindful and try to stay positive. I also recognize that I say this right after I cuss a lot, but (laughs) that's something for me to work on. Let's move on to our second tip. Be mindful of your subject's energy. Your subject is the topic of your sentence, the focus. Is the topic or the focus of your sentence negative or positive? Most of us will default to negative subjects. It's just what's been modeled to us, what we have seen by others, our parents or coworkers or even teachers maybe. I mean, we hear people talk down on themselves all the time or we just see them really harnessing and focusing in on those negatives. I feel like I use this example a lot, but I feel like it's one of those that a lot of people can relate to. So I'm just going to go with it. Let's say that you're trying to get healthy. Do not use the phrase like, I am cutting fat or I no longer want to be overweight because the focus of those sentences or the subject of those sentences are overweight and fat. Instead, opt for the positive versions of those sentences like, I am healthy or I am toned, or I am fit. Do you see the difference there? You're essentially getting to the same point, but one version carries a negative subject, and in this case, fat or overweight, and the other version carries a positive subject, like healthy, toned, fit. You're saying the same thing, but the energy of the sentences are entirely different, and they're going to manifest different things for you. And you can always check yourself just by comparing the words and phrases you're constantly using when thinking about manifesting something. Are they words that make you feel good and open or dread and tightness or, I mean, you know, just good or bad in general? Other phrases that I hear a lot are also about past traumas or even ancestral trauma. I feel like these are buzzwords that a lot of people are talking about now. And instead of the common phrase that I keep hearing, which is, I am working to let go of past traumas. Try using the positive variation of that example. Why not I heal myself and bring peace to those future generations? The intent stays the same, but the phrases feel totally different. They have totally different energies. One is focused on the past trauma. The other one is focused on healing and peace for the future. I hope this is starting to help you understand what I'm talking about here when I talk about subject, energy, and phrases. And unfortunately, this nuance is where a lot of people start to criticize manifestation. They try it out. They're like, I am not overweight or I am losing fat. And they're just like, I don't understand why this isn't working. And what they fail to realize is that the energy of their sentences or their thoughts and whatever it is they're trying to manifest, that energy matters just as much as the intent. But most people focus on the negative subject instead of reframing it into a positive So they're manifesting more of what they don't want by focusing on what they do not want. Another example I hear a lot of people saying, especially when they have their fresh out of college, is I want to clear my student loans and gain wealth. And oftentimes that affirmation statement, using our affirmative language, will be something like, I am out of debt or I am not in debt. What's the focus of those two sentences? Debt. Debt, 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 and more debt. So what do you get from the universe? More debt. Instead, reframing that into a positive would look like, I am wealthy. I have a lot of money. I am financially free. Or even going something outside yourself like, money is always flowing to me. Money is abundant. Get creative with it as long as you keep it positive and you keep the focus right. The subject energy of your sentence matters just as much, if not more, than the actual words themselves. And this brings me to our last and third technicality. Do not use negations. See what I did there? Again, the focus is on the subject and the intent. Throwing in the word not into a sentence does quote-unquote not change the subject. So saying something like, I am not going to be late, tells the universe, late. I want to be late, or I will not be passed up for the next promotion translates to pass me up for the next promotion. This pretty much goes hand in hand with that subject energy and phrasing conversation we were just having. The subject remains the focus, and it doesn't matter if you throw the word not in there, as I continue to have a whole paragraph that has like five knots in there. (laughs) 
The universe doesn't speak our language verbatim. Instead, it follows the intent or the subject behind the sentence and the phrases we're using. Few would hear or read the sentence, I am not in debt and envision a mansion instead. And the best example I think I've heard to describe this sort of thought is, is that elephant example that's given a lot. If someone tells you not to think about an elephant, what do you think about? A freaking elephant. That's what you're asking the universe to do when you use negations. So talking about or thinking about debt does not translate to mansion or a really nice car or whatever it is that you want for yourself. And if you grew up with a pessimistic mindset, this will not be an easy shift, by the way. I get it. I lived in that for decades. But your words are powerful manifestations and you need to assume responsibility for them. Find other ways to get your meaning across. If you find yourself in the middle of a sentence and you're about to drop the word not, or maybe you already did, just stop and start over. Say to yourself, let me try that again and start over. That is a perfectly acceptable thing to do while you're learning and while you're practicing this new frame of mind, because that's what it is, guys. It's a whole new frame of mind. It's not going to happen overnight. Be kind with yourself and allow yourself the time to work through this. The way we speak is a habit, and you will have to unlearn all those bad habits that you formed throughout life, myself included, by the way. I still work on these consistently, and I'm sure you've probably heard past podcasts where I've slipped up myself. We are human. We make mistakes. We have the luxury of being imperfect beings, and all we can do is try and learn from our past mistakes and move forward. Do not dwell on your faults because they're just signs of progress and every success is going to require past failures. So keep that in mind, be kind with yourself, and just get to work on doing the best you can and making the changes that you can in small increments. And, 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 as we talk about changing the words and the phrases and the thoughts you're using in order to become a better manifester, this 1000% includes self criticism. If you use hateful words with yourself and you judge yourself harshly, what do you think you're manifesting? You are manifesting more of that hate and harshness to yourself. And why would you want that? You're not manifesting a happier life by criticizing yourself. I fucking guarantee it. Be kind to yourself and shy away from that self punishment. You are worth so much fucking more. Don't do that to yourself. I don't want you to do that to yourself. If it makes you feel uncomfortable to give yourself all that love and kindness, pretend I'm giving it to you. Let my voice come into your head and say the things like, you are beautiful, you are successful, you are intelligent, you are everything to this world because you fucking are. So if self-criticism is an issue for you, cut it the fuck out. And don't let your friends partake in it either because we model the behaviors of those around us. So if you have a friend that's always like, I'm so ugly, I'm so dumb, I'm so this, that, and the other, stop it in the tracks and stop them from doing it. As you do that with others, they'll start to do it for you too. And hopefully we can all just not get in the habit of degrading ourselves. I don't know where we learned that. I feel like it may have been media or who knows where we learned to self-deprecate ourselves in, in the pursuit of humbleness or modesty. But we need to cut that shit out. It's not good for us. It's not healthy. And we are magnificent fucking beings who don't need to do that to ourselves. And the self-criticism is especially important when you're thinking about past events and traumas as well. When you think about those moments and the impact they have left on you or who you were at the time, what words and phrases are you using? How could that reflection and the phrases you're using to describe that moment when you go back and think about it, how is that manifesting for you today? Because those thoughts still are if you haven't shifted that mindset. So if you're calling your past self weak or stupid or ignorant or dramatic, how can you be kinder to your past self? Because those words that you're using to describe your past self are still manifesting for you today. Work through that and be kinder to yourself. Every trauma, every th- experience that you've gone through, no matter where it falls in the, the scale of severity, right? I mean, I talked to you guys about a quote unquote traumatic event for me, but obviously it was very low in terms of the scale of, of trauma. Wherever that falls for you, know that one, you did not deserve that in any way. I would never say that to someone. But what lesson can be learned from that? What 
positive came out of that experience, even if there is absolutely nothing, 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 nothing positive about that experience. What has happened as a result that could be that silver lining for you? What can you focus on as the new positive to help you reframe that? And it's not about making that situation okay or saying that it was fine. It's about removing that situation's power over you. The strings that you're holding on to and can't seem to let go. And by the way, I'm not a therapist. So if you have had an extremely severe trauma, please go talk to someone about that before taking this advice. But for everyone else, reframe that past negative situation or experience so that you can remove its power over you. Reshift that negativity and find the silver lining so that you can find that positivity and move forward and manifest from a new place. And if you are someone that's had a really traumatic event on the, on the very far end of the severity scale, please make sure you go see someone about that. Again, I'm not a therapist. I would love for you to use these tips. However, I also understand that you might not be in a place to use them yet. And so I want you to reflect and figure out what you're comfortable with and what you're good doing right now. But please, please, please go see someone about that if you are handling some negativity from a past traumatic event like that. But I do want you to be in your healthiest place that you can be in order to manifest. And a big part of that is going to be you working through that. So take the time to heal yourself. But even if it's something like you were made fun of as a kid, or maybe you made a mistake about a past relationship like I did, and you're beating yourself up over it, or you're beating your past self up over it for whatever reason, hoping that you can then go back and and change the experiences or the acts of your past self, you can't. So be kind and stick to the positive. Or how can you reframe that past situation so that you can view it with a more positive shift or to reframe it with a positive mindset? That way you can focus on bringing yourself healing so that you can move forward. And don't just allow those past traumas to hold you hostage to their negativity. Free yourself. How can you reframe that situation, not for the other person or the other people involved or whoever was involved, but for you so that you can become the master manifester that you inevitably want to be? What reframe will help you step out of that negative mindset? And pro tip, this is why forgiveness is also so important because it allows you to move forward and release the negativity that's holding you back because we're definitely not doing it for the other people. (laughs) I mean, maybe you are if you're a really good person. So those are the tips I have for you this week. To recap, the three manifestation language tips are use affirmative language, watch the subject's energy and phrasing, and avoid negations. And your homework for the week, I know y'all love homework, is to begin noticing your speaking patterns and your habits. Start self-correcting anytime you notice that you're not being affirmative or that you're not using positive subjects or that you're using negations. Begin your sentences with I am, I have, I will, and avoid the use of the word not. And lastly, present the positive side of a scenario or reframe it to a positive. As you're doing this, maybe you ask your friends, family, coworkers, whoever, to help hold you accountable also. Let them know that you're working on a positive mindset shift and would really appreciate some help correcting yourself. And then maybe give them some examples of things that you say a lot and how they can help you with that shift. You would be surprised at how many people would want to join in and do the same for themselves. They see that you're making this positive change and then they might have a moment of reflection where like, wait a minute, I do that too. Why do I do that? Let me also work on that with her. And this is a great habit to get into just before the new year. This is actually something I enjoy doing a lot with friends of mine, and when we get together, all we have to say at this point, since we've been trying to reshift our our words and phrasing for so long, is we just look at each other and say, do you want to try that again? (laughs) And that allows us this moment to be like, oh, you're right. I just slipped up. Let me say that again in a more positive reframe. And this just not only helps us raise each other's vibe, but it's just also a beautiful reminder that we do mess up sometimes. We're all collectively interested in helping each other grow and do better. And empowered women truly empower women. So please let me know how this is working for you or how this has helped shape the way that you are living now. And if you want to leave a review of this show, please screenshot that review and email it to me at hello at the, T-H-E, modernmanifestation.com. And then I will send you my seven weekly tips to create space for abundance in return. 
It's a great little way to help you increase your vibe throughout the week, but Apple does take a few days to process reviews, so if you screenshot that and email it to me first, then I will make sure that that gets sent to you immediately. And I also don't get the emails of people that leave reviews, so I don't have any other way of getting it to you without that. Have a fantastic rest of your week, and I will catch y'all next Monday. Until then, go out there and manifest some miracles. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this podcast, hit subscribe so you can stay up to date with new episodes. As always, we would love it if you would share this episode with friends and family who could use the inspiration. As a new podcast show, we would really appreciate your honest feedback so I know what you like and what you could use more of. As a thank you for leaving us a rating, we will send you our seven weekly tips to create space for abundance. Make sure you screenshot your review and email it to us at hello at the T-H-E modern manifestation.com so we can send them straight to your inbox. If you'd like to stay connected, you can find us on Instagram or Facebook at modern manifestation, or you can head to our website at the modern manifestation.com. Thanks again for joining me and I will catch y'all in the next episode.